<clears throat> hey there, everybody. Today I thought I'd talk a little bit about Pentax 6.7 lenses. So uh, the thing you need to know is that um, there's uh, they've been making the Pentax 6.7 system for, well, they, they were making the Pentax 6.7 camera system. I think it started out in 1969. <clears throat> and so the original lenses, which are still available, looked a lot like the, uh, the screw mount M42 Tacomar Pentaxes, okay? And then there was kind of a second generation somewhere in the mid 70s, early 80s, where they kind of took on the look of the M series lenses. So um, the 45 millimeter is one of those lenses that um, got the neutral density on there. The 45 millimeter F4 is one of those lenses that looks kind of like an M series lens. And then there was um, in the mid 90s, and these dates are approximate, but you get the idea. If you really want to know, you can look it up. Um, in the mid 90s, they kind of switched over to the uh, A series looking lenses. And so um, like the uh, 55 F4 uh, is an A series looking Pentax 6.7 lens, if that makes any sense. I'll uh, show you some footage of what each kind looks like. Although I don't have any of the original Tacomar style lenses. Um, they, the lenses were sort of redesigned every time they uh, changed the cosmetics on them. And sometimes they changed the uh, lens formulations. So basically the rule of thumb is the newer models are like optically better. So that's a rule of thumb. A little cold out here, I'm gonna put my gloves on. I think it's like 32 degrees, which is like minus 100 Celsius, I think. So the first lens I'd like to talk about is the 45 millimeter F4. There is a 35 millimeter fisheye, but the 45 millimeter F4 is the widest rectilinear where, you know, straight lines stay straight kind of a deal. Um, it's the widest rectilinear lens for the Pentax 6.7 system. And this lens was never um, upgraded to the new looks as far as I can tell. Um, if they did upgrade, the, upgrade it cosmetically, they never changed the optical formula. And so the 45 F4 is, is a good lens. It's not one of the better, it's not, it's not one of the best Pentax 6.7 lenses. It's totally serviceable but it's not like really super outstanding, but it gets the job done and it's relatively inexpensive and that's why I have it. I like it because it's wide. It's a good lens. It's a solid lens. It's a good lens. I would give it like four and a half out of five stars. So it's a good lens, but they never updated it. And yeah, so, so there's that. Um, another rule of thumb with uh, Pentax 6.7 and all 6.7 format medium format lenses is, if you're trying to understand what uh, the focal length is in let's say 35 millimeter terms to kind of better help you figure out what lens you want to use to shoot with, just divide by two. That'll kind of get you in the ballpark. So the 45 is kind of like a 22 and a half millimeter lens for full frame. Um, I'll put it to you this way. It's, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a 20 slash 24. It's somewhere in that range. The aspect ratios are different, so it doesn't really equate equal equal you know but it, it gives you an idea it's kind of like a 2024 in that range um, let's put it this way by for a long time it would have been considered a uh, a super wide but by today's standards it's just a wide angle okay now that uh, you know full frame is going to like rectilinear 10 millimeter and things like this so um, okay that's the 45 f4 the next lens I'll talk about is the 55 f4 and this is, uh, again, divide by two. It's kind of like a 28 millimeter in full frame. Um, this is the modern version, the, uh, you know, the, the last version of this lens. It's worth the extra money. You can pick these up for about 400 bucks. I just picked this up because um, it's nice to have. It's, it's a really good, um, if, if, if it's, you know, my rule of thumb is, there's a lot of rules of thumb with medium format. My rule of thumb is if I can, Shoot, if, if the 55 is wide enough, I prefer to shoot it on the 55 because it's a better performer than the 45. But if I really need the 45, I've got it and I'll use it. And, um, and the 45 is worth it. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, one or the other. 
Um, but the fifth, this, this, uh, the modern version of the 55 is, uh, you know, it's a 10 out of 10 lens. It's, it's a world-class lens. It's a really good lens. So uh, there's that. So there it is. Okay, that's the 55. The next lens I'll talk about is the 90, um, the 928. And uh, I love this lens. I think personally, I think this is a better lens than the 105, although the 105 tends to rate higher. Which, is, which I don't understand. I've always considered this to be a, the better lens. The 105, I've said this before, traditionally the 105 was the cheap kit lens for the 6.7. It's a great lens, don't get me wrong, but the 90's better. And uh, I like it better. I think it just does a better job. Um, so that would be equivalent of a 45 millimeter lens in full frame. It's um, f2.8 and it's small and compact. And, and it's a, again, it's a 10 out of 10 lens. It's a wonderful lens. The next lens I have in my bag that I'll talk about is the 135 macro. It, um, it, it, so here's the thing about the 135 macro, right? It's about a 65, 75 in that range, whatever half of 135 is. So it's about a 70 millimeter lens and, um, and it does, it does close focus, uh, it gets down to 3.2 to one. Yeah, it's a macro, I guess. They have a 100 millimeter macro that's like a 10 out of 10 lens. This lens, this lens is not a great macro lens, okay? Um, it's a decent close focusing lens. But where this lens shines is it's a 70 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length that's really tack sharp for landscapes and portraits and things like that. So as an all around lens, I think this is definitely a lens worth having in your bag for landscapes, portraits, etc. However, don't let the macro name fool you. The other side of the coin is you can pick this lens up for 150 bucks, brand, you know, and it's in brand new condition. Well worth having in your bag. It's a fairly light lens too, for what it is. So um, that's the 135 millimeter F4 macro. And the last lens I'll talk about in my kit, which is a honker. And that's it fully extended. I mean, that's like a 70 to 200 for full frame. It, that's not the equivalent, that's the size. Um, this is the 200 millimeter F4. And again, that's a 100 millimeter lens in full frame. So it just goes to show you what 6.7 will do to you in terms of like making your lenses physically bigger. You can pick these up for like a hundred bucks, which is just criminal in the sense that like, this is a 10 out of 10 lens in terms of sharpness and build quality. I mean. It's a phenomenal lens, and, and for, for, for less than $100, it's, it's criminal that they, they're selling this stuff this cheaply. I love this lens. It's a really sharp lens. So I don't know what to tell you. Well, that's my take on the Pentax 6.7 lenses, and uh, I hope that some people found that informative. Um, that's my kit. I don't tend not to bring all of them at once because the bag kind of gets really heavy. Each one of these lenses weighs a bit. Like, oh, definitely over a pound. Some of them weigh like two pounds. A lot of glass covering that 6.7 size film. And um, that's why the lenses are so good, though. There's a lot of glass in them, and it's really high quality. I mean, it's, these, these are, these are world-class lenses, so. Okay, so that was my talk on my Pentax 6.7 lenses. Now I'm going to do a little Pentax 6.7 photography. All right, there's some lovely ice on the river here. And uh, dialing in about F16 at one second. Here up. Perfect. Well, there's some FP4 Plus in the bag, and if those turn out, I'll show you what they look like. Thanks for coming out today. 
Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you out here. Have a great one. Bye.